a state coach came to watch our high school game. And he was like, oh, you're pretty tall and athletic. I was a middle when I first started, as most guys are from there. And then he introduced me to like the state-based program where I would train, you know, a couple of times a week with like strengthening, conditioning, and like real like uh, volleyball practices with like a state level coach. And then from there, it's like, you know, you play for your state team and then youth national teams and then get invited to this uh, Australian Institute of Sport. And then from there, you know, you're training full time with other athletes who are around a similar age and a little bit older. And the national team would also train there on, during the national team season before they would go play the competitions. what's going on i have this like twitch in my like corner of my eye like dude dude last year i was saying right no way my right eye right eye top like top corner what it's is fucking it fucking annoying i don't know magnesium deficiency i don't know maybe you need some more sodium or something you're, you're like yeah i don't know and just get super specific magnesium deficiency i'm gonna look it well, up i guess really usually like eyelid twitching. yeah do it yeah i don't know you Eyelids. sleeping well I mean, I feel like I'm sleeping, sleeping pretty good. Eyelid twitches can be caused by eye irritation, eye strain, lack of sleep, dry eyes, or too much caffeine. Severe, oh, lots of, yeah. Caffeine, too much caffeine, maybe? maybe. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Man, because I, I had like a weak-ass coffee. I'm on like the end of my bag, you know, like the end of the bag of yeah. coffee. And dude, my situation out here now is like, I have a catering service that basically like, and I can't believe, I don't know how many other countries do this, but it's so smart. Like it's like a local catering service where they basically send me breakfast, second breakfast, lunch, yeah. like a snack, Dope. and dinner, like all packaged together for like twenty five dollars, like US dollars a day. I get the like you know that bougie shit. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah, it's like twenty five. It's like twenty five bucks a day, and they every morning just like drop it off right here, and I walk like wake up and go pick it up. Um, but I like I can't believe no one else does that kind of thing. Like I don't know if other countries have that. Like in well, in, oh. Uh, probably in Korea, like for, for our team, like we, our team hires a catering company that like they, we have our own kitchen and our own team compound. So we have like chefs cooking all our meals. Oh, okay. Wait, I want to get, I want to get into some of that. Yeah. I think I was like, I was like, why did I bring it up? The point, I, the reason, the whole reason I brought it up is because mm. I don't like go into the city anymore. I don't go grocery yeah, shopping. Yeah. So now my kitchen is like bare bones and I'm on like the last grains of coffee. Yeah. And so I made this like very weak coffee um, and I'm regretting it. Now I have to like go take a trip into the city because I'm out here kind of in the woods. <sighs> Anyways, uh, dude, Lincoln Williams, my old roommate, champion of France, dude. Uh, dude, we haven't talked in like so long, the Aussie hammer. And I'm just <laughs> fucking like, I'm so stoked to be, to just be catching up, honestly. Um, so what's up, dude? Oh, you know, same old volley grind, you know. I'm also stoked to be here too, you know. You're a great personality. It's like a fantastic dude to be a part of a team with. So no, I'm stoked to be here, man. I don't want to start, start nose, to talk, it's, talk with too much love, dude. Easy. It's great, you know. Well, it's pretty, can be pretty isolating in Korea being the only foreigner in a team, you know, mm. completely different experience in some places in Europe. Uh, but no, it's, it's great talking dude. to you again, man. Des describe to me that really quickly like you're uh for those of you who don't know like you're aussie and you've played like all over the place and right now you're playing how many years you've been playing pro uh, i think this is my 10th season 10th season and now you're so, in yeah, Cor tenth. you're in korea and how how lincoln <laughs> and i met we we ended up being on the same team in france in con we won the championship we had a great year we were roommates got real close um and now you're freaking in korea like what a change dude i'm just so curious like what is it like man it, like korea is like its own own different world like it's almost like when you're here nothing else exists except for like korean volleyball hmm. like uh because mo most of the coaches in korea are past players so they just do the same things so, you know you're a good player you become a coach and then those players become the next coach. So they just do like the same thing. And it's just so enclosed here. Like the Korean volleyball, it's like its own own fucking world. So it's so strange. Usually, you know, when it's like playing playing overseas, you know, you have guys from fucking everywhere that bring their own 
like uniqueness to the team. Mm. Here it's just like you have to adapt to the Korean way, and if you don't, you get fucked pretty much. Well, what so what is uh, first of all, damn it, dude! Uh, my producer was telling me not to swear in like the first ten minutes of the episode, <laughs> so it does well. Right, right. Look at us, dude! We're popping yeah. off early. Fuck <laughs> it, Ugh, take us off yeah. the air, you know. <laughs> um, you said like the Korean way. Like, what is what is the Korean way? Well, I'm in a pretty unique experience because I've also got a foreign coach. Um, like just from talking to with other dudes who've been there, just the guys on my team, it's like <clears throat> the way they play volleyball, how they practice. Like, for example, like other teams will have like every morning at like six thirty, they wake up and you know body weight and muscle and fat percent check. Wait, other breakfast. teams or your team? No, other teams. Our team okay. did it like does it once a month. But okay. my coach was like, just fucking sleep. Don't worry about that. Yeah. So, dope. But like, you know, they'll do that <laughs> and then they have to have breakfast together at 7 a.m. Day off or not, you know? So it's like, the kind of pretty like military style kind of like practices and just like long practices, hitting, hitting lines, just banging the high balls for a couple of hours a day and then go lift weights. Okay, wait, this is like, you're like running through some things that this is like pretty oh, dense man. and the experience, no, it's just, it's so different and unique. The first thing yeah. you said is everyone eats together what wow yeah. are you guys all in like a like a compound together or yes. what yeah like uh every team has their own own compound where you know they got their uh rooms and uh like weights rooms training hall physio rooms uh, yeah but you guys all live in the same building like oh it's it's like a i assume it's kind of like a dormitory um but i've got my own apartment like i guess uh right. all the guys and foreigners you know they'll have their own apartment um but like but the, you're still the in the same uh no like I, I have this apartment and i have my room at the compound okay so you you live yeah. you live off campus <laughs> yeah well like now my family's gone home i i spend most of my time in the compound which is more convenient more convenient yeah yeah but, yeah because dude I, I can imagine trying to even like drive to the compound is like like street signs i have so many questions bro what is it freaking <laughs> like in korea like i couldn't imagine like do they drive on the the other side of the road? Do they like nah, are nah, Korean? Nah. Are Korean signs like navigating? Is that just like is it, is it just impossible? I it, it's tough, but you, you get used to it. But it's like merging onto a highway, and then when you get off, you have to go like skip six lanes to the left to merge onto somewhere else. And then when you get off that one, you have to go back, and oh, it's it's pretty nuts. And like the population density of Korea is is wild. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. So like. On a weekend, if I'm driving to practice from my apartment, it can take 15 minutes. But if there's some traffic, it can take 45. And that's what's like that? only a little bit of traffic. And in Korea, you're in the north or the south? Uh, I'm pretty north, I think. Well, I'm in South Korea, north South Korea. But like Seoul <laughs> is close to the border. So it's like, because Korea is a small country. Yeah. So I'm in the northern part of Korea. Yeah. Okay, wait, I, I got to wrap my head around this. You're in the south of Korea, but you're in the well, northern part of the well, south of Korea. Yes. Well, you're I'm not in, a part of the well, regime. I, no, I'm not in, I'm not with uh, the Kim Jong-un. Kim Jong-un. Can you even, no. can you even say his name, dude? Or are they going to find you? I think it's you Kim Jong-un. No, no, nah, nah, it's all good. Nah, <laughs> you, I think, I don't know, I got some special forces breaking in. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, I think, yeah, the northern part of South Korea. Okay. Okay, and so are all the teams you play in South Korea? Like, dude, what is the yeah, like yeah, divide? Yeah. Like, what is what is that like? <clears throat> uh like uh, most South Korea don't have like you know, uh, it's it's hard to explain. I was a bit wary about like North Korea when I came here just because it's yeah. so fucking close. But For sure, the, the Koreans don't care at all about it. Usually, when it's like uh, the North Korea makes like some threats or whatever, it's just because they want food or money. And so like North Korea is battling, stuff. I'm just like a stupid, ignorant California kid, but like North Korea is battling like South Korea. They like, no, it's, it's like, a, I think it's like a ceasefire, or whatever. I'm, I'm not okay. entirely sure. It's just kind of like, they're kind of like the, the kid, you know, who gets left alone at lunch, but always barks loud, you know, and just give them some food and they, and they <laughs> shut up for a while. So they're hungry again. Okay. It's pretty, pretty interesting. That's so gnarly. But yeah, it sounds it sounds then like you're like pretty isolated. Do you get to travel around a lot, or are you more just like the grinding it out? Uh, there's not too much time, like for traveling. I, um, 
Yeah, give me the yeah. average day. You were talking about you guys all eat together and like training. Oh, uh, like, we don't. Like our, our team's our team's like super chill with that stuff. Huh. So, um, average day, you know, wake up, have breakfast, go lift weights, come back. Man, we have we have a sauna, we have a hot pool, cold pool in our compound. You know, nice facility. Chill out for a bit. Yeah. No, yeah, pretty nice. It, it's you know, couldn't really ask for much more. Okay. There's dope right. food as well, you know. Sometimes yeah. it's a bit too spicy. My white ass can't handle too Wait, much did they... heat. Spicy food in Korea? I didn't know that was a... Yeah, 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 yeah. But... So you eat, you eating like, uh, I don't know what, noodles for breakfast? Or like, what's your... Nah. You sent me a picture. You sent me a picture like a couple months ago of like just yeah. an absolute smorgasbord of like food. Yeah, well, the, the, way, the way Koreans eat, like if we go out, you know, to a restaurant uh you know night before a game they have like huge like hot pot in the middle with uh, like noodles or whatever and it's a bunch of like side dishes and everyone just like shares from from the shit that's on the table from the trough yeah <laughs> but everyone's like huddled around like a table with like a cooker in the middle and it can be like boiling noodles or some soup or whatever or like pork belly or beef and you, you just cook it yourself and you share it around and it's got all the side dishes, usually like some pickled vegetables and whatever. Dude, so you get the like, uh, there's just like a, is it like a, okay, you guys have a chef. But when I picture like going to like a Korean barbecue place in the States, at yeah. least it's like, you know, you got the the grill in the front and you just like have raw meat and you just grill up your own yeah, food. Yeah, you're just and, cooking yeah. stuff. Yeah, it's, that's that's it pretty much. Yeah, they, they bring you like plates full of, full of meat and you mm. just chuck it on the, on, on the grill, cut it up. They use scissors, they cut their meat with scissors. No way. Yeah. I was like, no way. Why do you guys have fucking scissors? Yeah. Because they, they just chuck, chuck it on the grill that's in, in the middle of the table. And they have their tongs, pick up pick up the meat, just like cut it into portion size. Just like and arts and craft it. class when you're in like <laughs> second grade. Yeah. The middle block is get us uh, the safety scissors. <laughs> and dude, we need them. Dude. Yeah, dude, Korea is the best place in middles. Yeah. Yeah, well, because like usually, like it's they get paid heaps because every team needs a middle. Yeah, like every, every you know you need middles. So and it's not like there's no foreigners go to play middle in Korea except for Simon played a bit. Um, but you know, so the Korean guys, the, the good Korean middles earn like good money. What's what's heaps? And for those Americans who don't know what heaps is, it means a lot. Uh, for I th- I'm not not entirely, but at least you know the best middles are getting four hundred thousand plus. No yeah, way! Dude. Oh, dude! Yeah. So the Korean volleyball players are just stars, then. Oh man, Me- mega stars! That's crazy, dude. It's crazy yeah. to hear like how much ball like it's hard because like in the states at least there's no pro league there's no like hype around especially men's women's are are coming up and killing it which is awesome but like for men like there's no pro league in the states but it's but i love hearing these stories Australia. of like yeah yeah i know and i love hearing like a place like korea volleyball i don't is volleyball huge or is it just that for those who like volleyball they love no, like, it's the it's pretty stars. big it's, yeah. it's pretty big like for, like i went to log on to watch just the online um, cause they have game on TV every night and then they have like the live streaming on the internet. There was a couple of, I was like, I think close to 200,000 people just watching on the streaming and it's wow. not including the people at the stadium or watching it like live on, on TV. That's sick. Do you have a big stadium? Yeah, it's pretty big. It's pretty nice. It's like, like just, it's our stadium. You know, we don't share with anyone. It's like, mm. you know, we've got huge posters of, of the players like around the, um uh, around the walls of the streets as well we have like posters and flags of players on the streets leading up to the hall hmm. it, i'm not sure exactly the the size but it's, it's it's good it's big and are you just like the the golden child for them you know oh no dude the, like the the locals are like like the foreigners are like a cool or whatever but like the you know if you're a local star it's like you're a, a real star you know wow yeah because I know about K-pop, dude, like Korean pop music, but I, I don't know yeah. much about. Uh, that's crazy, <clears throat> man. That's so crazy. I'm, I'm like, I'm also super interested in like, just how have you found like the people in general? You know? Yeah, dude, they're super polite. Um, like the Korean culture is, 
like everyone everyone's just polite until you get in a car but in general hey, why do you say that? Just, <laughs> because they're, they're fucking crazy in a car like every, it seems like everyone's always rushing to be somewhere so uh one time last season went to go see the folk village with my family mm. and i was in a car park for like two hours trying to find a spot and i almost got into like five different accidents because people were just pushing in front and it's the wow. same everywhere like driving it's like if there's any space they will force their way in and and yeah it's, it's pretty wild oh, but man. in general they're super polite people you know it's Dude. i guess you can you can imagine it I can't imagine it. And I also feel like where's the safest place to drive a car? Like if anyone knows, like, please comment or say something. Like I want to know because Korea is bad. Guess what? LA sucks. Like I've been to Mexico. It's crazy there. Like Italians do. And I played in Italy. You played in Italy too. Italians, not good drivers, dude. Okay. They got all these (laughs) fancy cars, but everyone seems to just like have no, there's no rules of the road. It just seems there are some good highways are great there, but. You know, I've just, it feels like it's just constant. Everyone's in a rush, dude. I, I feel like Germany's a pretty, pretty good place to drive. Yeah. Yeah. yeah you, like, play, you played like, a season there, didn't you? Yeah. 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 And like on the Autobahn, everyone like respects the rules. If there's a guy, if you're in the fast lane, go on like 180 miles an hour, there's someone who's gone fast and they'll move over. You know, everyone's pretty, pretty polite there and say decent drivers. So dude, I, feel, and- I feel like just the places I've been, Germany's been the best. And I'll say this too, like, I think that's the, when I, I don't know, I don't know what it's like in Australia, but I know for the States, at least it's like the far left lane is the carpool lane. So if you have like more than one other person, like two or more people, you can drive yeah. into the carpool lane. I get it. But I love this idea of on the highways. It's been, it was like this in Italy. It's like this in Poland. It sounds like it's like this over yeah. there where it's like far left lane is awesome. whoever wants to go the fastest get out <laughs> yeah. of their way dude and yeah. i think it's genius like it makes yeah. so much sense like you get in the left lane just to basically pa- it's basically a passing lane a right passing lane yeah yeah pretty much yeah yeah and that's how it should be dude honestly like if you feel like being chill and driving slow go over here and if you feel like you got somewhere to go go over here you know yeah i can imagine makes like sense. i don't it makes sense, dude. It seems logical. I can imagine too for like people in emergencies, like how nice is that? You know, it's just like you don't have to worry about dodging traffic and causing accidents. You just get in that left lane and you floor it, dude. Yeah, and you go. Did, what, did you ever fly on the autobahn? Like, did you ever like just really push the limits? No, nah, I didn't. My I had uh, one teammate, my setter, who was who was an older guy, uh, had a nice a nice beamer. He would sometimes fly, and on a Sunday morning, there's no one there. It's like five lanes of nice road just going you know 220 oh and you are, just, did you use miles per hour do you guys use miles per hour no, in Australia? Oh, no. no we use you, you did that for me dude that was sweet of you yeah 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 <laughs> i got i got some freedom units memorized from playing need for speed <laughs> so sick um dude that's funny i i i actually went on the autobahn i went to oktoberfest when i played in milan like four or five years ago and we had a couple of days off and went to Oktoberfest. dude actually driving at that speed and and cars on the right like if there's a car on the right going like well i actually don't know miles per hour as well as i used to <laughs> i've changed <laughs> um but if you're going like i don't know 65 miles an hour 70 like the speed limit in the states like if you're doing that in the autobahn and then that far left lane dude we were going like well over 100 it's actually scary to like blast past cars yeah, like, I don't know. It's it terrifying, is. dude. Because, like, are they going to fucking want to go in this lane or not? You know? I know, dude. You did, and I don't trust. Exactly. How could you trust any of them, dude? You haven't even no. been to dinner. <laughs> yeah, I agree. Um, all right, hey, I want. I I'm really. I want to go back to Korea because it's still just like the most fascinating thing to me. Because I I'm really like the part I I would love to know right off the bat is like, what do you compare the level of Korea to? Oh. It's it's hard to say, you know. In some ways, like it's 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 some of the most difficult volleyball I play just physically, but in terms of the actual volleyball level, are you saying that because you get set like a hundred balls a game or what? Yeah, it's like we play, you know, every three days sometimes for like hmm. six weeks straight. We played every three days. Wow! You know, and your body's just yeah, and you don't have time for practicing. You don't have time to recover. It's just like go 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 but mm. um i think like our team now 
that we have and we won a championship last season i think we would be like a like a middle team i guess in france interesting but it's also it's hard to say because when like we got a fair few like older guys in our team like our, our setter is i think like 36 or 37 mm. and it's like and when us and the, we're fresh and we're playing good we can play some really good volleyball but there's times where everyone's just like cooked mm. and it's just like super scrappy or like for example last year's final the that foreign player Keita spiked 97 balls in a no game. way like 97, no way yeah, yeah. so it's like it, is, it just it's not even volleyball anymore it's just six against one you know wow. so it's it's sometimes it's hard to compare because it's, it's totally different than normal volleyball yeah, and I, I guess I mean more also like, um, you know, just average level. Like, like what is Korea? I can I can imagine. I and I'm just guessing here is like, they got to be pretty good at least on defense. Like pretty scrappy. Yeah, yeah. They're they're like technical skills, uh, like at a high level. Mm. It's just that they play, you know, such like basic level volleyball. It's like okay, you dig the ball on five six meters, and then you set a ginormous high ball to the foreigner. <laughs> like with with, okay, with, it, yeah. with with our team, we tried to like Tommy, our coach, like to break the mold and just play like you know next level volleyball, trying to create something different. You know, like everyone being able to set fastball, set first tempo, two touch plays, just like stuff like this. So I think we have a pretty big advantage in this area. But there's sometimes you know if the other team's foreigner is on fire and just getting set, you know, moon balls, and he just spikes over the block at you know 100 miles an hour you, sometimes you just can't stop it so it's it's kind of hard to to compare it because it's, it's so different from Something. european volleyball yeah well then i'm i'm interested to know like on on your end like how clearly getting set like 90 balls in a game is gotta take its toll but in terms of like in the moment like how hard is it to like you know, like how hard is it? Like, for example, you have, you have the hammer of a serve and of an arm, like are your good serve, like is your good serve considered great because they're not as likely to pass it as someone who's in like the Polish or the Italian league or the yeah. other side of that too is like on blocking, like is their max block just like not as big of a deal as if you were playing like yeah, a double or triple block somewhere else, you know? Yeah. Yeah. It's like that. Like, uh, uh, at the moment, I think I'm in second place of aces per set but also we, we the ball we use is like it it just moves you know it like if you hit what a bit of side spin a star ball i think it's a like korean ball huh. it's called the brain is called star okay like you hit some side spin on this ball and it fucking flies yeah you know? so you can yeah you can rip some dirty serves with this ball i mean that was kind of like the 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 big to, the big difference that people know maybe on more on a world stage is the molten and the Mikasa. Yeah. And the Mikasa is like the international ball and the molten, and, right? I'm doing this right. Yeah. And the yeah, molten yeah, yeah. is like that green, red, and white ball, the one we used in France. Yeah. Like, dude, that yeah. ball, you but, can just, you don't need a good wrist. You can just hammer that ball. Oh, you can brick those balls and then go in. <laughs> but like with the, with the star, star ball, like it, it moves. Like if you have side spin or top spin, like it'll dip, it'll drop, it'll float. Like it's, I think it's probably the hardest ball out of like Mikasa and Molten to receive mm. just because it moves, it moves so much. Um, but, and then like the blocking, most of the time, you know, the foreign, they'll switch the foreign up to block against the other foreigner. But uh -huh. like the, like in terms of like size, you know, of course it's not, not the same as it is in, you know, the better leagues in Europe. Sure. Um, dude, so like, um interested to know how do you feel do you feel like you're getting worse do you feel like you're getting better like do you feel like you can get better <gasps> yeah like like working with with tommy is i think i think i i've, I've gotten I better need, but it's also i need to like in in a vacuum it's hard to tell because i've been here now from you know my second season yeah um yeah because that's always national team or anything that's right and i, I want to get yeah. into some of that later but i'm i'm you know that's always the because look, for and for those who don't really know professional volleyball so much on a world stage, it's like, I feel like there's two routes. And if you're like really a star, you're lucky enough to maybe like play in the best league in the world and make a shitload of money, you know? But like for a lot of us who are like really good, it's either like you go somewhere like, and I'm not, 
this is not about like on you. This is not, hopefully you don't take this the wrong way, but like you either go to somewhere like Korea you, and you and you go, yeah, also fuck yeah. you. Uh, you either make like a shitload of money, like you make a ton of money or you go like maybe make yeah. a quarter of that to try to play in like a better. high competitive yeah, yeah. league and get better. And so, ex- well, you just said it, right? You said to get better. And so that's always been my, my, my thought is like, Cause dude, I would love to go like to, I would love to go to Japan, go to Korea, go to China. Like I would mm-hmm. love to, to just to experience something different where I know maybe the, now it's for a middle blocker. It's a lot harder to get in than an opposite, <laughs> but like, I would love to go somewhere like that, make a ton of money, experience something completely new. But the fear for me has always been like, Oh, well, like what I'm if I just get better? Well, and not even just not get better, but like, what if I just get worse? And then I come onto the national yeah. team and it's like, Oh, now I see a block in front of me and I don't know what to do. Like, I'm sure it's not that drastic, yeah. but I am really interested to know like how you yeah. feel you've been developing like uh i think like the, my coach he, he told me he's fantastic i think you would you would love this dude you know he's always I was just pushing i'm go sorry on. to interrupt i'm sorry to interrupt you i just don't want to forget dude go on, go on. uh send me his information after this i've heard a lot of things about him blair band talks about him a lot he seems like mm-hmm. an amazing guy would love to get him on you maybe you yeah. can talk about him a little later too yeah yeah all yeah. right yeah so you no, know, just working with him i feel i feel like i have gotten better in terms of you know like added new skills and new weapons into my toolbox. But again, I, I don't have anything to compare it to. You know, I can't just mm. next week go play against like a, an international team just to be like, oh, how's this working? Mm. Um, I think from a mental standpoint, I've, I've gotten better just because it's, you know, as the foreign guy in Korea, it's like the spotlight is on you and you have to mm. perform. So it's like, you don't have time to, you know, reflect on your last game because you play in two days or you don't have time really for anything. You, you feel, you feel shit. doesn't matter. Go out, you have to play and you have to perform and you have to win. So uh, from a mental standpoint, I think definitely, you know, having to be the guy all the time has uh, helped me. Um, in what way, like how, times, how do you handle that pressure? You know, like, Oh, I played on a lot of different teams. Like in, in my career, I played in, bad teams in good leagues and kind of like good teams in medium level leagues. So it's like I, I, in France, like I could for really the first time in my career, I was in a team that's like, okay. We have a good team. We can win, but I don't have to do like extra, you know, I could be like, Oh, I'm not playing so well this game, but it's okay because Taylor or Danny or someone is crushing ball. So I can just like chill out a little bit. Don't put so much pressure on myself. Um, but then here it's like, it's completely, it's like the spotlight is on. You're the foreign player. Everyone's watching everything you do, you know? Mm-hmm. It's like, if we lose, okay. Like sometimes if, if you play bad, you'll get some, you know, hate mail from fans or whatever from some fake Instagram accounts. But like in general, being on a team that has like high pressure to win. And then it's like, you're the guy on that team. It's like, I don't know. You just kind of like my first season, though, I had some, pretty big ups and downs, just like trying to deal with this like completely new volleyball style and system and mm. just dealing with being like, like a lot of pressure, a lot of like scrutiny and uh, just having to play. And like, there's nowhere to hide. Like I have to play, you know? So it's not like where in France, I could chill out for a bit. It's like, oh, I'm not feeling too good this week. Um, I'm going to let Taylor carry or whoever. And I can just, you know, focus on practices next week and, try again next time it's like i have to play good now and then three days later it's like i've got another game so i have to play good again Mm. you know it's so i think having to go through that and coming through the other side of it winning the championship it's like okay now i can relax a little bit i know what it's like um i know we played 36 games in the season uh, before the playoffs so there's for sure there's times where your body is is destroyed uh, you're sick or you're feeling bad you haven't had good sleep whatever it's like this is just like but once you've gone through that and come out the other side you're like okay i can relax a little bit i know what it's going to be like just have to deal with it at the moment um i i want to get into like this this sounds like just like an unhealthy situation like i'm so curious how you stay healthy and first talk about like the or I would love it if you talked about just like how how you manage that pressure because it's it's a really it's really interesting like you know I know for myself 
when I look back on teams where we've won or done really well, like being one of the guys, if not the guy, like you said, sometimes I was the guy, sometimes you were the guy. And like, that's why we were such a good team. We had a handful of guys who could be that if they were on mm -hmm. Addy, if they could be on Danny, like then they could carry the team. And that's, I think what also makes a great team is having guys who can go off like that. But I'm really interested to know, like, how do you manage that type of pressure when you, like you're saying, you have, there's no time to reflect, which is probably a good thing. There's no time to sulk in bad yeah. games, but like, yeah, yeah, dude, how do you manage like the added pressure of like being at the service line? And like, if you break your serve, they win or like, you know, like that kind of stuff. I'm, I'm so interested. Like, do you have any tactics or anything that like has been really useful for you? Um, well, what, what's helped me, it's like, if I played bad and we lose a game, it's I, f I feel so shit. It's like, I hate that feeling. So like, if I'm starting to, in a game, like mentally tip, it's like, I don't want to feel like that, you know? So it's like, I just have to, every time I touch the ball, I have to try and do my best, you know? Cause I, I hate that feeling after a game and you don't play well. Like I just, like you, you feel shit. It's like, mm. I, I hate that feeling. So it's like, I don't want, I don't want to do that. If we lose, we lose, but I don't want us to lose because I played bad. So just like, just the, the dislike and the hate, uh, hatred of that, of that feeling. So it's what, it's like, I don't want to feel like that. I don't want to feel like that. So I'm going to do what I can not to feel like that. And I know sometimes I can still play bad, but have a good like mentality. It's like, okay. You know, you, that day wasn't your day, but you did what, you know, what you could. So it's like, okay, then we play again a couple of days. So just go again. So for you, it's like in some way having like a short term memory, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty much. It's like, yeah, it, it helps. Like there's times where, you know, if you play once per week, it's like, Oh, you, you know, you have so long to like, fuck, that was shit. Why'd I do that? Why'd I do this? But here it's like fuck. okay I, I hate the feeling of playing bad and losing even just like, even if we win and i play bad it's like i still i hate it so it's like i don't want that feeling so i just gotta now what what can i do now kind of thing uh so interesting and do you, i mean okay you're you're telling me that and i'm i'm hearing you and i'm like man for sure that seems like it'd be motivation but is that hard to in a game make that kind of change because we've all had and i recently just had like my worst game of the season and i was like in the game like shook just like how is this no. happening like i don't i'm not the guy to make that mistake like what is going on and when you have so much success and i can imagine obviously you have more good games than you do bad games so when those yeah. ba especially as i think you get better the bad games and bad performances just become less and less and in some strange way i feel like then it has made it harder and harder to deal with almost because when you yeah. do well, like objectively, you're like, you really have a bad game. Get over it. Like, who cares? The next five are probably mm -hmm. going to be great. It's still so hard. We take it so personal, you know? Yeah, I think it's just experience. Like I've had, you know, I played professional for 10, 10 seasons. So I've had plenty of bad games. <clears throat> That's like, you know, I, I've been here before. You know, I've been here before a lot. Of course, as I'm getting older and more experienced, it's less and less. But it's still like, you know, I like I've been here so many times. I know ways that help me get out of it you know i think it's just the experience of being there a lot has it helps me when i start because for sure you know when you you make a couple of bad mistakes you're like what the what the fuck was that you know like mm -hmm. i don't do that and it's like you start to feel yourself mentally dropping so and that's like i've been here before so many times that it's like okay if i make this bad mistake why do i make it and it's just like a quick like uh you know i have like a self-interaction in my head like why why did that happen it's like, did you do everything right? Or did you try to do everything right? It's, yes, then it's like, okay, then don't worry about it. You know, if it's like, oh no, you were, you know, you were, you bitched out pretty much. It's like, oh, well, don't bitch out. You know? mm. Do you catch yourself bitching out sometimes? Yeah, every now and then. I'll, yeah. I, I catch myself bitching out, you know, but it happens a lot less now than it, than it used to, sure. you know, but it's kind of like, fuck, because that's like, wow, why did I do that? Why was I pussy? You know, like, don't, don't be a little bitch, you know. <laughs> but I don't like, I Said like a bitch. true Aussie, dude. <laughs> yeah. Um, and uh, dude, I'm uh the last like part of that for me is it sounds like <clears throat> in Korea it's all about or in your situation currently it's all about the game is just how healthy can you stay how fresh can you feel more often so i can imagine like recovery becomes so much more of a premium for you as compared to yeah. you know like you said when you can 
have seven days. You have a game day, the next day's off. Maybe the next Monday practice is light. Like you can kind of ease yourself back into it. Um, what are you doing to recover? Like, how do you, or are you just like, or are you just a tank? Because let's be honest too, your genetics are insane, dude. And you are a tank who could like slam beer after a game and just go play the next day. Cause you're hardcore like that. (laughs) Not anymore, man. I'm I'm getting old. Uh, like we we played yesterday, uh, or last night. Um, so today I lifted from like three till four 30 ish. And then, you know, went did some stretching with our with our physio that was so this is that was my rest day um mm. but we have in our team we have four physios four um, four yeah and it's like wow. i i had i had treatment after the game we got home last night from mistake we got home you know close to midnight and he's treating me for an hour you know after we get home wow yeah, and we have like I haven't used them much, but we have like oxygen tanks in our treatment room. Like you go in there, it's like a big cylinder thing, and you just zip yourself in there. The dude presses the button and it just fills up with, I guess. Wow, you're like a hyperbaric, oxygen. yeah, hyperbaric yeah. chamber. I'm pretty sure that's yeah. so sick. Yeah, I, I've used it a couple times, but I wasn't sure yeah. if it was just like placebo effect. I didn't really feel much difference. Yeah, that's an interesting one. I don't want to. I don't want to comment on what I think because I'm reading a book right now called Breathe. I mentioned this before. Yeah, and it's all about the breath and how, like, actually, carbon dioxide is more of like the um, area of focus where everyone thinks it's about like, oh, breathe in more oxygen and like more oxygen for your yeah. blood. And it's really like your ability to rid carbon dioxide or utilize it or whatever. Mm-hmm. That's why I don't want to talk about it, anyways. Um, that's no, so. It. No, please God, dude. I, I, I am just, I'll just continue to spread false information. No. Um, that's crazy. That's, I, that's amazing. And it's so different compared to like when we were in France and we had, yeah. I don't want to call it much of a physio, uh, situation. And honestly, on most teams I've been in, like, for example, did you played in like Sweden, right? You I think you started. Yeah. Sweden? I yeah. started in Sweden. Yeah. Uh, what was your physio situation like there? Do you guys have a physio? Oh, we no, I didn't have a physio. It's like if you had a bad problem, you go and book in on like a local clinic and go see it paid to see the physio. Yeah. Oh, so, I was young now. I didn't have I was I was golden, man. I was yeah. 18 years old, you know. Didn't have a care in the world. Yeah, but I think the point more that I was trying to hit on at least a little bit is like I feel like most professional teams in most leagues. Having like, first of all, having a good physio is insanely rare, let alone yeah. having a physio who's like dedicated to your team. Like here in Olsen, dude, we have a physio, but he didn't listen to this, dude. I love him. He's a sweet boy, but he's a puppy. Like he's no. not, he's like, and he's not, you know, he's like, I'll massage you kind of guy. He's not someone I yeah. trust to like help me get down to the root of what might be going on and how we can fix yeah, my movement patterns. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And actually treat the problem. It's more just like, oh, you have pain here. Like, let me press on yeah. it, you know? I, 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 it sounds like for your situation too, like you need like having four, I'm guessing you have one who's dedicated to you. How does he live in your house? too? No, no. He's most of the time just at the compound though. Mm. Yeah. Um, Yeah. yeah, There's this one that's like my dude who I see all the time. You like him? Yeah. He's, he's like a middle aged short Korean dude. Who's strong as shit. So like, yeah, he seems pretty knowledgeable, you know, like, uh, of course, like every country's physios do things slightly differently. Mm. Um, that's What's the, his the best thing about uh, getting strong flexibility and deep tissue. That's my nightmare, dude. That's my nightmare. But that's, I'm sure a lot of people love it, man. A lot of people love that deep tish. Uh, I, I, I enjoy, Yeah, you know, I, I feel good after it. I'm not sure if it's just like, for me, my personal one's always been like, if I'm strong enough, then like usually that if my I five issues is like oh, I have a weakness somewhere, so it's like I feel like if I get stronger in that place that's weak, then I feel better. That's really interesting. So, like, uh, can you use an example? Like, I know you had some problems with your knees when we were in con, right? How are your knees yeah. doing? Uh, they're okay. Uh, yeah. I, have a, I have a different knee problem now, but that's because I landed awkwardly. But it's it's like a non-issue. It's just like a manageable thing. But in general, money's they're good. How are, how are you managing? Uh, like, dude, if you're playing every three days, how do you manage like working out and getting stronger? Because I can imagine that's like the hardest part. 
and now it's 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 not that getting stronger it's just like in general it's like if i have like sometimes i I feel like I'll, i'll neglect some muscle group or something just because i haven't like really had time to do like a full full lifting sessions that's so what i like, mean more yeah so know? it's like when i once I, if i start hurting someone it's like oh i i realize i haven't done some exercises in a while it's like fuck i need to stay on top of this mm. um so pretty much that. And it's like if i'm feeling bad i can you know talk to my coach and he'll be like okay do what you need to do to to play it's like if i need to have you know finish practice halfway through and go lift or whatever he can just yeah, do it. Do what you need to do to to play. That sounds like a luxury because I can imagine other yeah. foreign players in your situation don't have that luxury. No, no. you heard any That's like horror like, stories? Yeah, there was one uh, young Serbian guy who started the season in one of the teams, but he ended up like uh, being replaced in the in the second round. Um, but he had he was having some knee pain, and he like finished a practice earlier. And a couple of like the front office people from his his club saw him, you know, stretching while the other guys were practicing. And they came to him like, "You can never do this again." You know, you, you ha- if they're practicing, you have to practice, kind of thing. Wow. So it's like, yeah, pretty rough. Do you guys get fired easily? Like, yeah. Well, this I've, heard, this I've season, heard of guys getting like let go early, but I'm curious yeah. is that common or not? Well, uh, this season two guys have been fired and both were pretty early last season was was worse one team went through three different foreign players wow do they pay them full salary or do they just like how does that work i think it's like 45 days extra so it's like when once your contract's terminated they give you an extra 45 days of pay 45 days that's like a month and a half that seems obscure yeah i I don't know i don't know who came up with 45 days but that's yeah. what it is. Well, they're not replacing my freaking Aussie hammer, dude. <laughs> yeah, speaking, we're speaking of which, dude, uh, you for those of you, you can't really tell, but my boy looks like a freaking tank over there. Um, and you look <laughs> like you look like you've been playing rugby your whole life. Uh, have you? You have. I mean, you also look like you could like take someone's school like lunch money, dude. You look like a guy who's just like I guess I remember from the first day I saw you, I was like, dude, this guy has a presence, <laughs> bro. <laughs> you know. Yeah, well, I, I did play rugby for a lot of. You did grow up playing rugby. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It was like a family thing, you know. My dad played rugby. Me and my brothers, we all played rugby. I played since I was, I think, like, start when I was four. But when you were four, but, yeah, you but were trucking like kids at contact. four. Nah, okay, nah, okay, it wasn't. Okay. When you're young, it's not contact. It's two like flag. Yeah, like flag. Okay, okay, yeah. okay. Um, but now I've I've slimmed down since France, just because it's like uh, in France. By the end of the season, I was like 114 kilos, which is like 250 pounds. But I was just like Uber Eats and <laughs> lazy life. You know? Sponsored by Uber Eats too. <laughs> Man, I kept Uber Eats alive in kind during lockdown. <laughs> but that's what, you know, the wife had gone, gone back to Estonia. So I was just, after coming home from practice, I was like, oh, Uber Eats. Um, <laughs> but then, like, when I first came here, I got down to 102, 102. I'm not sure what that is in pounds. Wow. 20. Yeah. Yeah. That's like, I'm, I'm probably like, cause you're what? Six. You're like two meters almost a little less. Just, yeah. Just under two meters. Yeah. I'm, I'm the same and I'm like a uh, yeah. hundred kilos. So I'm like 220 in there. 225. Yeah. 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 But you get then dang, if we're like almost the same weight, you got that, you got the good pounds going on, dude. Yeah. And no, I got I, that. I, I leaned out. I got that early onset dad bod. <laughs> <laughs> dude, yeah, dude I, i'm uh i'm really interested in knowing like you spoke a little bit about like how you grew up playing um rugby and that's very clear um but like just like what's it like living in australia dude like what was it like growing up there because so many people listening are not from australia and maybe there'll be more after this but mm. i'm like so i'm so interested to know like mm. i want to get a little bit into like volley culture but more specifically just like you growing up what was it like i was pretty good you know uh, australian life i guess is is great you know there's not many problems i guess from as a kid's perspective you know going on in australia um the sun is shining it's warm oh. uh what are winters like are there winters in, in my yeah yeah we have we have winters it just i guess kind of depends where you are in australia like my in brisbane where i'm from it can be you know over 20 degrees in the winter so I'm not sure what that is in Fahrenheit, but it's it's uh, warm. 
Yeah. I mean, over 20 is like yeah. 65 and above. Yeah. 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 So it's like, you know, I'm coming home from Europe and being in Brisbane. It's like, you know, I've sometimes been in places where it's, you know, minus 25 to minus 50. Going back to Australia, it's like, you know, a cold winter day. It's 15 degrees and people are just like huddled up. It's, it's warm, you know. Um, but what always, when I was a kid, I never understood in Christmas movies, like watching Home Alone and it's like snowing. I'm like, it's, it, why is it snowing at Christmas? It's 40 degrees outside, you know? <laughs> Just not understanding, you know, the other side of the world. It's and winter, for those of you but... listening, he's, he's talking about Celsius, okay? It's time to learn yeah. a little bit, you know? Hey, yeah. so speaking guess... of which, no, I'm curious, what, like what metrics do you, you guys use like the rest of the world metrics and we use the like Yankee yeah, metrics? Yeah. 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 All right. Yeah. <clears throat> I think I, I've... Go ahead. Uh-huh. I guess I've got a kind of basic understanding of uh, imperial units, just not Fahrenheit. I guess Fahrenheit is pretty easy. It's like if it's 100 degrees, it's hot. If it's zero degrees, it's cold in Fahrenheit, right? <laughs> I and mean, that's fair. Like, yeah? Yeah, I mean, so yeah, like, for sure. But it's yeah. crazy, you know? Like, uh, first of all, you called them imperial units. I didn't even know they were called imperial <laughs> units, so you clearly know them better than me. <laughs> but, like, I, yeah, yeah, so it's it's hilarious because... I don't know why we created this system and like, for example, and I'm probably wrong, but like 33 degrees Fahrenheit is freezing. And I don't even know what the boiling temperature is, but in uh, Celsius, zero degrees and below is freezing. That just makes yeah. sense. That it just does, makes it sense. Make sense. To be and 100 is boiling. Out. And 100 is boiling, dude. There you go. Very, yeah. Very like it makes scale. So much sense. And so if a hundred yeah. is boiling, then please don't make me do math, but I don't know. It, it, it's an obscure number that's boiling in Fahrenheit. <laughs> I, don't, I don't get that at all. Dude, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm interested also, like, do you have, you have brothers and sisters? I have two brothers, one older, one younger. Okay. So you're middle, middle child. Yeah. What was that dynamic? Like, do you guys like wrestling around all the time or? Yeah. My, me and my, my older brother's like a year older than me and my younger brother's three years younger so me and my older brother were pretty close um and a lot of times it ended up us picking on our little brother because he's always baby but um you know but we were, we were all close yeah. and when we grew up we were all you know we all played rugby then my older brother played a little bit of volleyball but he was terrible yeah he was a short little nugget um younger brother was, was okay for like an amateur level volleyball player but no we, we all you know Grew up close, good family unit. Yeah, what, what kind of kid? What kind of kid were you? Like, I'm so I'm oh. so interested to know because look, I'm being honest. Oh, like, yeah. I, I love you. You look like a bully, dude. You look. Yeah. I mean, it's not true. You're a freaking koala. You're like the sweetest man that yeah. I know. But like, as a kid, like with that stature, like, were you just this like very kind hearted kid, or were you like picking on kids? Like, honestly, what were you like uh, as a kid? Like, I was, I was like a rascal. I'd say I was. I was, I was a pretty skinny kid. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, pretty skinny. Um, just always a bit taller than everyone. Uh, but I don't know, I'd, I'd get in trouble like a, a decent amount, you know. Uh, As rascals like, do, home. baby. Yeah, you know, doing, doing, just doing stupid shit. Yeah. Um, you know, I just remember you know, I was swearing or whatever and getting, being threatened to be sent to the orphanage, <laughs> you know, and just the breaking orphanage. shit around the house. <laughs> yeah. yeah, me and my brothers would like, you know, destroy something around the house. It's like mom's like, all right, I'm sending you to the orphanage. Like, no, <laughs> mom. But uh, you know, they're just always, you know, finding a way to get into trouble, but not meaning to, just ending up in trouble. But yeah, no, I was uh, made a lot of friends at, at primary school and high school. Uh, I have I've been like the same group of friends through kindergarten, pretty much through high school. You know, we all went wow. to the same. Yeah, it was, it was crazy, you know. So where did you grow up? I've met in Brisbane. In Brisbane, okay. Yeah. And, I mean, but Brisbane's not like a small, a small town though, right? Like you guys- No, no, I grew up in, in, in the suburbs, like so just outside of, of, okay. of the city. Um, so yeah, me and my, my mates, you know, I've known them since I, I could pretty much walk, you know, so I've known them for a long time. And we've Do you all still been keep- friends since. Yeah, yeah, still, yeah. still talk to me every now and then, yeah. 
Okay. Yeah. I'm, I'm I actually, I'm super interested now. Like how do you manage? Because you know, the hard part with our lifestyle is, you know, like I have friends that I met in kindergarten that I random will randomly run into each other or say something, you know, and that's like, we'll always have those moments when we were young together, which is fun. But like, I am, I get almost envious. I think something that we sacrifice with this, with our job is like really staying connected to friends we had in university or in high school or as kids. And like, I'm always so envious when I see like, like my girlfriend, for example, has friends that she's been friends with for like a long time. And I'm like, for sure. That's pretty cool to watch how much people evolve, like to be a part of that process. Um, do you find that difficult to like stay in touch with with friends? Uh, to a certain degree, yes. Like you'll, it'll never be the same as you are if you if you, you know, live in the same city and you see each other often, you know. But a lot of times when I go back to Australia and I see them, it's like, you know, it's like we saw each other yesterday. Um, of course, you know, you're not privy to the same inside jokes or, you know, the ins and outs of what their daily life is like but when we talk and when we see each other it's you know like we spoke just yesterday so Mm. in that regard like they'll always be close friends but i'm also kind of dude it's like i feel like i don't need to talk to people all the time like if i if i have if i think of something that reminds me of them and i want to tell them about it or you know I'll, i'll send them a message or whatever but it's like i'm just so fucking busy like they probably don't get like really care. They're not, you know, itching on the computer or phone waiting to hear from me. You know, they're doing their own shit too. So mm. it's just like, I don't know. I feel like when we're together, it's it's fantastic. But, you know, also, I guess you, you can't grow apart a little bit, but I guess you also have like a strong relationship that it doesn't matter when we see each other again or when we talk to each other again. It's like, you know, same old, same old. And, um, I'm I'm also really curious to know like when did you discover volleyball like as a kid because you talk about growing up in like a rugby family like is there volleyball in your genes somewhere or like where did you discover no. that no. no so at my high school the way it is like uh so we have school sport I was saying like in similar to USA but our school sport is like term based so we have four terms in a year the first term the school sport is either cricket or volleyball in high school in wow. and cricket is fucking boring um <laughs> it's still like you know it's just like takes hours out of your day in the hot sun it's like you don't want to play cricket um yeah. so i was like my and my older brother started playing volleyball and i was in the seventh grade so we like we weren't playing volleyball yet so i went to watch him watch him play and i was like oh that looks pretty fun so i was like i'm gonna try out for volleyball the next year and like in rest is history. So we play, you know, eight weeks a year, play volleyball. And then for the next whatever few like a few months, the rugby and soccer is a bit longer. So you know, a, like a rugby school. So the rugby season's a bit longer. Then after that, there's like track and field and basketball, like terms three and four. So, so yeah, so for the first couple of years of playing volleyball, I played just eight weeks a year from when I was 13 till 15. Okay, so when did when did you start like when did you start taking on volleyball full t- kind of being like okay this yeah. I think I'm gonna hone in on and like what does that look like like what's Australian volleyball culture like you know all right so we have this like place called the Australian Institute of Sport um, it's like a big like complex where they like uh, host multiple like Olympic sports in one place so you have volleyball athletes you have track and field swimming. Uh, rowing, cycling, water polo, whatever, all those Olympic sports will all stay at one place in Canberra. Uh, we have all, you know, like the training facilities, the nutritionists, psychologists, doctors, uh, physios, everything. So it's like a pretty, it's a huge place just for, you know, Olympic sport athletes where it's mm. kind of like you get granted a scholarship. I'm not sure what it's like now, but back then you get granted a scholarship and you get to live on site and train full time and that i got that when i was 16 but it was how do, how do they find you like would you try uh, out like how's that work no like that i remember like a, a state coach came to watch our high school game and he was like oh you're pretty tall and athletic i was a middle when i first started as most guys are wow but, and some of us finished yeah, that dude. way but yes yeah, i'm lucky bro 
Um, <laughs> well, uh, you were lefty middle. Yeah, but I wasn't like a real middle. It was like you were running like the ball high in the middle. Yeah. 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 Okay. And just go up and hit. Yeah, um, we find that like, disrespectful for you to call yourself a middle if you're running two balls. Yeah, sorry. The court, but it's yeah, like, yeah. I was I was just hitting from the middle of the court. Got it. Um, from there, and then he introduced me to like the state based program where I would train, you know, a couple times a week with also starting like strengthening, conditioning, and like real like uh, volleyball practices with like a state level coach. And then from there, it's like you know you play for your state team and then youth national teams and then get invited to this uh australian institute of sport and then from there you know you're training full-time with other athletes who are around similar age and a little bit older and the national team would also train there on during the national team season before they would go play the competitions it sounds really uh similar like we actually don't have that in the states it's interesting like uh at least i don't think so <clears throat> like in Poland, for example, they have kind of what you're describing. It's like, if you're going to look like you're going to be like a future great volleyball player, you go to like a volleyball school. Like, do you, yeah, yeah. you still, no, you're still getting oh. an education or no? Well, I went, I went to a high school in Canberra that was close to the Australian Institute of Sport. Up until you so were 18, more or less? Yeah. Well, in, in Australia, you gra- like you graduate high school when the year you were 17. But I guess it's okay. slightly different state by state. Really, yes, between 17 and 18 is when you okay. finish high school. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, but yeah, it, we have like, I think in some places in Australia, there's actual like volleyball schools where it's like a normal high school that just, you know, their major sport is uh, volleyball. But the majority of schools in Australia are Australian football schools or rugby schools. So not much in terms of, of volleyball, just- but... Uh, maybe I'm an idiot. I'm just like trying so hard to comprehend. When you say it's like a volleyball school, what does that mean? Uh, it's like a uh, you know a school, a private school that would give out sports scholarships for, for volleyball athletes. Okay, so it's unlike the university system in the states where it's like there's a university and then they have some football, they have some soccer, they have some yeah. Football. I guess they they do they do have other sports as well, but it's like their main scholarship program for athletes is volleyball or rugby or Australian football. Got it. Know. Well, and like, because our yeah our school and like collegiate system is completely different to the USA. Like we don't have real like college teams or university teams. I think yeah, there's a couple for rugby, but there's not like you know the NCAA or anything like that or D one or D two. It's like you're gonna you go to university and maybe you can also play some sports and then they'll play the university games, which is just like a piss up. You know, everyone goes to party and drink and have some fun playing some sport you know it's not like (laughs) it's not like a legit competition or a step like a stepping stone to be professional or a national team player that's why we have this Australian Institute of Sport that's so interesting I also you just like you saying piss up just like made me want to just turn down a completely different road right now like I can we just go over some like basic Aussie lingo dude like that is one thing that I freaking loved about having you as a roommate is like culturally like I'm the like, yo, what up, dude? And I remember like, yeah. I remember one, I remember one time you like, <clears throat> like, I was like, give me your impression of like an American accent. And you like basically did an impression of me and I was freaking dying. dude. Like, <laughs> I, I love that. Cause you know, for me, it's like, it's yeah. fun to like, and please, yeah, and whoever's out there, don't cancel me. Okay. Or whatever. But like, it's freaking fun to like, be like, dude, we come from such different cultures. Like we have so much to learn from each other. And I loved yeah. some of the language you use. So piss up is one. Yeah. Oh man. It's, it's, it's kind of hard to think from the top of my head um oh yeah i guess that was just like normal you know it's just like my normal speak um shrimp on the body that's like, not one no nah, that's not one that's a fake one that's fake <laughs> hey let me let me tell you other fake ones i asked you this yeah. before uh, another fake one would be like in the states i don't know where it comes from but there's a beer called fosters and i'll never yeah, forget okay do australians like fosters we don't drink fosters I, i've never seen a fosters <laughs> in australia i've only seen it once when i was in an airport somewhere i was like i'm gonna try fosters and it's, it's not good shit. No, no it's like Folgers coffee dude you know what it's so yeah. funny like i remember as a kid just i just remember the commercial like fosters australian for beer <laughs> <laughs> i remember hearing no. that and then i remember saying that to you and you were like no dude i didn't even basically heard of fosters that like threw me off that really did throw me off yeah for sure like no no one drinks fosters in australia if they are they're not australian no they're not what no. do you guys drink 
what's your drink of choice like is there something that's like a very you're, yeah. that's a very aussie drink vb victoria bitter is probably and 4x gold probably the two of the most like, Those Australian are beers. beers okay okay yeah VB. oh my you should did you you should you just you go 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 <laughs> you should do so this fucking hilarious like vb v ads or like two he's new there's some amazing uh australian beer ads we also like a, a rum, a Bundaberg rum. Also, they've got some great commercials for beer. Oh my God. Rum. I've never tried to watch anything on the air. I don't know how this will work. I don't know if we're going to, I'm going to, sure. I'm going to try it. I don't know if this cancels us or not. Can you hear it? Oh, uh, wait, a little I'd, bit. Have to sh- I'd have to share my screen. Oh, I'm going to, uh, we're, we're not going to be able to do it for right now. I'm going to watch those. Yeah, later. No those look, yeah just the old school, like eighties look yeah. sick. Yeah. Fantastic. But oh, that probably, yeah, the most, a VB is probably the most Australian beer. Dude, you know what you just reminded me of too? There's something called, uh, oh my God, it's like salty Nutella. What's it called? Vermite? Oh, Vegemite. Salty Vegemite. fucking Nutella. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I've got some here. My, my parents bought over some. Oh my God, dude, I please. I the compound. Dude, and okay, I want to be also clear about this. There's something called vermite. And for those of you who don't know, I'm going to describe it the same way again. It's basically salty. It looks like Nutella, right? It looks like it's black. Pop- it's- yeah, it's- yeah, black is the way to put it. It's, it's not brown. Black, yeah. It's no, dark. It's black. No. And it's, it's what is, I mean, you describe the flavor then because it's like a extracted yeast kind of spread. It's super salty, uh, very high in all the, the B complex vitamins. It um, better be, dude. It better be healthy in some way for you. Yeah. Um, I, I, it, obviously, it's an acquired taste. I've been eating it since I was a kid. I love it with some on some toast. If you mix it with some butter, even better. Oh, that was a good one. Um, but you can you can have it with a lot of different things. It's just a nice savory snack. Um, it's okay. You you usually when foreigners try Vegemite, they'll grab a spoon and eat it, and that's just stupid. <laughs> Um, I, I remember gotta, my first time trying yeah, it. Yeah, you got you got to spread it, you know, finely. Um, <laughs> Dude, but, that's so funny because it's so counterintuitive, right? Like, for example, we're describing it like Nutella. It's like you're gonna want to clump as much on as possible, yeah. and you're yeah, trying yeah, to sell me like Veggie Bite being like, "Look, it's amazing," but you're just gonna want to put the smallest little bit on there. Yeah, if if you're like a Veggie Bite noob, you just use a little bit. But if you've Vegemite. been having Veggie Bites since you could fucking walk. You spread that shit on thick. I mean, that's but like going from, you know, smoking a cigarette a week to, you know, hitting a pack a day, dude. I can imagine then you yeah. need to clump it on. Exactly. You know, otherwise it doesn't do anything for you. That's hilarious. Yeah. And that's, and that's like a, uh, I think there's, is there one called Mermite? Mermite? Marmite. Marmite. Mar- Marmite. That's, that's a, New Zealand. British, I think. British. I don't know. It's, okay. it's not ours. It's not good. It's not, okay. it's not Vegemite. <laughs> That's, it's just not Vegemite. Standing firm with Vegemite, huh? Yeah, till I die. Uh, um, what what are like the stereotypes that like? Do you get any stereotypes, especially when you come to somewhere like Korea and they hear your Australian accent and they're yeah. like, "Do you get what are the what are the stereotypes?" Everyone, everyone tries to say "G'day, mate." They're like, you know, oh, "There you go." Can't. No one can do it. I don't know. They try. Hey, can I try? Like, can I try? Yeah, of course. Good eye, mate. No, that was all right. That was not bad. All right, a not bit, bad. Uh, a bit forced, uh, maybe. A little bit, yeah, but it's hard not to, you know. Uh, All right, give it to me then. Give me the correct version. Good day, mate. Just, huh. I don't know. I don't know how I say it. I, I feel like I have a pretty like bland accent just from being overseas so much. Mm. But yeah, I don't know. If you go into like the country, you know, Australian country, it's like thick, oh, guttural. Yeah, it is thick. They just pack on that Vegemite or what? <laughs> yeah, they can't talk properly. The mouth is all stuck with Vegemite. <laughs> but I might. Oh, it's amazing. That's that's funny. Anything else like that? Uh, like Korean teammates or teammates you've had in the past when they hear your. I've had people ask comments. me if we have if we have internet in Australia. Um, really? If we have, yeah. People are like you got internet in Australia? I was like, fuck yeah, but. <laughs> I think it's because like back in the day, because like, Australia is such a big open country, um, there used to be something called like phone school. We used to like, you know, your phone was hooked up, like all the kids were like spread around as like, you know, teaching you classes through the fucking phone. So I guess Wait, someone- what? Wanted to, yeah, but this is like ages ago, you know, when people living on like the sheep farm or sheep station, you know, 50 kilometers away from the next person. 
they have to, you know, teach you like phone school. Whoa. It's like it's like the pre-COVID school, you know, when <laughs> like during COVID you had Zoom school. This was phone school. school. Dude. Yeah. So I've had people ask me if we have internet in Australia. Um of course the classic, like do you have kangaroos as pets? Kangaroos. Yeah. Like, well, oh, can you, know. you also give me the lowdown? Like kangaroos is like a infestation. It's a pro- it's a problem, right? It's not like something uh, you guys love or what? Like for for farmers, it's a problem because they you know destroy crops and stuff. But and they're, they're just like, running around in the wild, right? Oh, they're hopping around. But yeah. Uh, okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that that if you live in like a built up you know city center area, you won't see kangaroos. But if you out in the suburbs or a bit more in the bush, you will see you'll see kangaroos and uh are they dangerous uh not really but you you don't you know you just don't fuck with them and they're fine most of the time they'll probably just like run away but yeah i just they i like be. i personally well i mean dude you see videos and photos of some of these kangaroos looking freaking jacked jacked yeah man they, you're like, like are people Benjamin. breeding them <laughs> yeah <laughs> They got that connect, no, dude. Yeah. No, I mean, I don't know. Like, there's obviously different like species of kangaroo. Like the, the red kangaroo, the ones that are you know big and just like, not like they pump iron. Wait, you said red kangaroo, but they're not. They're red not kangaroo. red. They, they don't no, have red like, like hair the, or anything, do they? No, no. The the back is like like a dusty, like rusty color. Okay. Then you have like the small like gray kangaroo, and then you have like wallabies, which are just like small ones. But the red kangaroos, they just, they're, they're, they're jacked. I don't know why. What they Dude, do in I, their spare time. I saw a freaking video of, you've probably seen this. I saw a video of like a kangaroo that took like a hunter's dog. And yeah, it's, yeah, no, and it's, hol- it's holding yeah, the dog it. right there. Yeah. And, the, and the guy just like squares up to it, dude, and just. <laughs> Boom! Slaps yeah, him on yeah, the side yeah, of the cool. face, and dude, no, I, fucking punched him, man. Punched yeah. the kangaroo. He's like squared up. Good on him, though. Like I have one of my yeah. national team teammates. Uh, his dog was drowned by a kangaroo. What? Farm. Yeah, dude. It's like they they can be pretty like territorial and yeah, just held his young dog like in, in a, like the lake or pond and just drowned it. Oh, dude. Yeah. That's terrifying. It's fucked. Yeah. So That's you so... shoot it and cook it, eat it for dinner. No. Oh, you can't eat kangaroo. I... We we eat kangaroo. Like, does the government want them to go extinct? Like, no, they... no, not extinct, no. but it's like they're at a level where it's like, you know, you can hunt kangaroo. Farmers, you know, hunt kangaroo that like the Aboriginal, like indigenous people of Australia hunt and eat kangaroo all the time. You know, there's heaps of them. There's way more kangaroos than there are people, but most of them. I'm not in the areas where people live anyway. Just like farmland, okay, and bush okay. areas. You ever, ha- you ever had like a, like I don't know, a kangaroo, kangaroo ribeye or something? Yeah. Yeah, man. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's fantastic. Okay, it's super lean. It's it's similar like a game kind of meat. You know, it's okay. super lean, high protein. I can imagine. Um, yeah. So it's like, and it's cheap. You know, when I was, you know, again living at AIS or whatever. Australian food sport having no money it's like what i could just you know if i want to cook for myself buy some kangaroo mince buy some spinach just get a bunch of protein super cheap did you say kangaroo it's, mince it's yeah what's that like minced meat like minced kangaroo oh, meat. minced i thought minced. you meant mint like an altoid <laughs> no, 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 no. Like minced, i was like damn meat. yeah like that burgers, kangaroo man. flavor nice. in your mouth boy yeah. <laughs> um oh. speaking Speaking of kangaroos, uh, ironically, your national team name is the Volley Roos. Yes. Um, I'm interested to know. I'm very fascinated to know because, like, knowing everyone's different national team situation, like, what's the setup like? You've been with the national team for a while. In fact, dude, didn't you go to the Olympics when you were like 18 or something? Yeah, dude, back in 2012, London. Crazy. Did you play? Yeah, uh, a few points. Still, but I also had a stress fracture. In my back. Oh, at 18. Was, yeah, rough. At 18. I was, I was playing beach, man. I went straight from beach to indoor and just with national team practice and then back didn't wow. like it. Yeah. Well, but, but, but okay you, you fractured your back before you went? Yeah. And they were like, bring them anyways. Well, no, the physio is like a misdiagnosis. So it's like, oh, it's just some facet joint pain or whatever. 
So I was just like, I was like in obviously in pain. So every now and then I was just getting rounds of cortisone injections in my back. Oh, dude, that can yeah, be good for you. Yeah. Wow. No, not at all. Not at all. It was not no. good, but well, healed up. It was fine. Worth it. Was it, set to go do it. Was it a pretty big honor going to the Olympics? Because you guys don't, you don't like, okay. No, we don't qualify often, man. It was yeah. like, it was my very first tournament with the national team was the Olympic qualification tournament. Wow. And I was like, this shit is fucking easy. <laughs> because <laughs> again i was young i was at that time i was pretty much just like a serving sub okay um, uh i was the yeah, second opposite side serving sub um so i didn't play much except for every now and then would get told to bang some serves but i didn't like i didn't feel the weight that the other guys who haven't qualified before you know like the guys have been in the national team for a long time and not qualified mm-hmm. um so time before that was 2004 in athens yeah it was and then from then to 2012, it was like, and so I was like, everyone was getting super emotional. I was like, fuck, what's going on? This is exciting. And then going to the Olympics again, I was 18. It was such a surreal experience because I mm. didn't really understand the weight of it and haven't gone back since. Not for yeah. a lack of trying, but just not being good enough when it counted. Yeah. Um, what's the What's the setup like? Like, for example, do you guys get paid? Like, if because well, you you're to. also you're not nothing in the national team anymore. Undisclosed oh, for the time being, no. On. Okay. Yeah, not for the time being. No, it's just yeah. I've no time. I'm just. But in general, the the sit the system is like, uh, is it is it a paid situation or like what is the? Do you guys train in like one facility in like I don't know a certain place or like what's so it like? It's kind of like kind of like changed up a bit with the different national team coaches. When I first joined. We had an Argentinian coach, um, John Uriarty. You know, his his son was a is a setter, uh, Nick Uriarty. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, so he he was he was wild. He was great, super passionate dude. But he he would like get the best out of you. But you know, you'd be feeling worse for wear. But oh, like with him, like our setup was we were training in Canberra, the Australian Institute of Sport, um, and then we didn't get paid anything. Uh, a couple of years later, we had a different coach, uh, Roberto Santilli. He, he coached in Poland for a while. Maybe. Uh-huh. Um, and at that stage, we made our way into Group 1 of World League. Um, so we were getting paid from World League. Uh, but after that, when we had, I think it was when we got Mark Leverdue, we started getting paid uh, from our like federation. And we would have our training camps in Poland and where he used to coach. He used to coach in Yashambia. So we'd have our training camps there. And it was, you know, sweet setup. Poland's yeah. cheap. It's a great place. You know, a lot of teams close by. So it was fantastic. You know, training camps were there. Good weather. Um, and then after that, it's pretty much when I stopped. But, uh, every, but, yeah. but like... <clears throat> So you're, they're just covering your like cost of living. Like they give you some food maybe and some. We, we had like three different groups. There's like group one, two, and three. Group one guys got around like 10,000 Australian dollars. Um, group two got 5,000. What's, a, what's, the, group... what's the conversion by the way? Do you know? Uh, US dollar is higher. I think it's like, um, I don't know, quick, you, you Google it? I'm looking it up. Yeah. One US like, dollar is one point four five Australian dollar. Yeah, so ten thousand would be okay. like you know, seven grand. Roughly. So one to one point four, one point five, basically. Yeah. Okay. So seven grand, like what uh, per south, like for the summer no, or for, for, for the summer? For the summer. For okay, the summer. okay, okay, okay. But we also used to get paid like World League money on top, so it was okay, you know. But um, interesting, for sure. You know, but everything else was covered, like accommodation and, and food and stuff, was all covered. Um, and the group three guys were like the shadow players who would get paid like 50 bucks a day when they were with the national team. Wow. And now you're at the point where you're like, I need a break. Yeah. I was, uh, after, after France, I was like, oh, I, you know, I'm just tired. Like, I just want to, you know, recover, be with my family. Cause it's tough, man. It's a sacrifice playing national team. Yeah. Like, and I've already done like, a lot. When I finished in Russia, I had, you know, my wife and Diana was, you know, less than a year old, and I had three days 
break from yeah. playing in Russia to the first game of VNL. So it's like that. And then a lot of sacrifices, you know, to try and qualify for the Olympics. And then we didn't. So it's like, I, do I really want to invest another, you know, four years that could end up being nothing? And okay, now it's, you know, it's going to be next year. But yeah, I'm going to be 30. Uh, you know, like, you know, how much time... You got a wife and kids. Yeah. How yeah. much time am I going to spend away from them? You know, I already spend like a lot of time away, you know, and it's, yeah. it's tough, you know, and especially when you get older, you need more time to recover. And I feel like at, at the moment, it's just like the sacrifice isn't worth, Can we... worth it because I'm... No, sorry. Keep going. Keep going. Sorry. Uh, because like a, we're, Australian national team is completely... It's, it's not like the US national team where you guys are, are successful. We have to struggle for, for everything and we have guys who retire and finish quite quite young. So it's quite often we get new guys in. So our level drops and it gets even harder, like harder struggle and to to be successful. We have a, like a good group of guys, but it's the level is just not where it needs to be at for me to be interested to play. Yeah. And do you is is uh, volleyball in Australia like popular? Not at all. Do people care or not really? No. We have a pretty big school competition like at, in December every year. Uh-huh. Like it's, it's pretty, it's called like Schools Cup. Okay. But it's just that. There's no... Fancy name, uh, I get it. <laughs> yeah, they thought real hard about that one. They <laughs> real hard about it for sure. Uh, um, but that's about it. We have the Australian Volleyball League, but it, it's a competition that lasts like two months. So you have, a, you have, you have a pro league? No, no, you have to pay to play, and it's expensive uh, flying around Australia. What so, a, another way to go around instead of paying the players, be the organization and make the players play or make the players pay you. Exactly, you know, dude. Uh, I, I'm, uh, <laughs> you know, it's so interesting. Like you were just talking about, like how tough it is, and I want to bring something up. I don't want to bring it up in the wrong way, so please uh, help me here. Um, like I remember. Uh, Okay, our year in con together, there were a lot of things that were like, um, that sucked, dude. Like hotel. You remember like some of the hotels we stayed at? They Man. were just bad. And I remember, I wait, forget. don't take this the wrong way. I was curious. Like you were always someone to be like, this fucking food sucks. <laughs> this hotel sucks. And like, I just found it so hilarious how like I would be feeling something. You'd be the first one to be like, this sucks. This practice fucking sucks. <laughs> like I loved it. Uh, I'm interested, like, is, is, and complaining is not the way to put it, but is like taking the piss in quotes out of everything. Is that like a part of Australian culture or was that just like your personality? I think a uh, bit of both, you know, for me, it's more like, like I have, you know, standards, you know, it's like if, if the calm was such a unique time, man, it was like, just as COVID was starting. Like it was pretty much like I halved my salary from the year before to go play yeah. in France to be wow. in a stable place. So it's like, oh, I don't know. And I, it was just like, I could, I don't know. I, I, I got pretty lazy in France. because I was like, <laughs> this shit sucks. Like, uh, well, dude, the whole point of the bringing this up, by the way, is I just wanted yeah. to do like a fun segment, basically just called oh, volleyball. Shit, that sucks. Just because let's just do it. All this, like being a professional player, we should be so grateful. We are, we love it, but we sacrifice a lot. Let's stop beating around the bush and let's do something just called volleyball sucks, dude. Okay. And these are all the things that suck about volleyball. We're going to list them off. And the first place I wanted to go was like, yeah, the hotel food situation, dude, was hilarious. It was fucking terrible. Everyone talks about like French cuisine and shit. It was fucking horrible. Like, I don't know what they do there. Like, or, or how little they want to spend on us to give us like a healthy diet or anything, you know, man. But going to hotels and the food is like cold and like a week old after you just had some shitty travel in a fucking minivan for 10 yeah, hours. Yeah. And it's like, oh, come here, have this cold, you know, cut beef that's been left out. You know, so oh, fuck. And also, sucks, I mean, man. you also brought it, you brought up a good point. We traveled in like little minivans. Like yeah. luck, there were times where we where we flew, but anytime there was a team that was like, I don't know, four hours within four or five hours, we would drive in these like tiny little minivans. Yeah. That's why it's like I got to the point where it's like, oh, this is just fucking bullshit. But they want us to be like a successful team and pressure and push us to win the championship. But then it's like we hired a fucking 15-year-old minivan, you know, go fit your, you know, six foot six 
frame into it with a bunch of other dudes you know and dude the dichotomy of like wanting like you have you know your president your managers which i'm saying i'll be the first one to say this most managers freaking suck dude and yeah. it seems like so easy to just like build a relationship and understand that we're also people and to your point like a lot of times dude exactly that where it's like we just had a long travel we've been stuck in these little minivans all day and then you're just gonna like open the door like a dog out of a kennel and be like okay hey, go play and then you come yeah. back and it's like here's your you know niblet nibbins like here's your little kibble yeah. and uh, that year for <laughs> sure we had like here's your like tiny bed in a hotel and like it just felt like a lot and um for those of you who are like oh, i don't want to hear you complain like that's the whole point of this is we're just going to complain because i agree like i if you look at how I can imagine, like, I can imagine, I don't know, Neymar or like, you know, these like soccer stars or LeBron, like those guys got, I'm sure they got it figured out. Now, granted volleyball, it's not that sport. We don't make our organizations don't make millions of dollars, close to a billion dollars, like not at all. But to your point, it's like, I also agree that there should be more of a standard. And the part that I think you and I had the hardest time with that year. And also like, I also had a great experience in con. We won. It was like, we learned so much. But like, dude, the hardest part is just feeling like it doesn't feel like it's too difficult to make these changes. It yes. just, it feels like it's, it comes from a place of like, just put a little bit of care into it. Yeah. It was, it was always like, oh, it's just the way it is, you know? Well, why? Why is it this way? Oh, it's just the way it is. Oh, the physio doesn't travel with the team or, or whatever. Or we'll take this minivan. Oh, we do this. It's like, why? Oh, because this is the way it is. But yeah. fuck, it doesn't have to be, you know? It doesn't seem like, it, like we thought we got those like cold cold bars in our locker room after six months or whatever asking for it yeah or you know shit like this it's like or we could we got our gym coach also halfway through the season yeah why yeah he, you know, he why didn't we have it before i, I agree or all, and also it's like it's not like you're brand new to this like especially like the managers and those people and uh this is no hit on them as managers it's more just on the system in general that i have a problem yeah. with because there just seems to be the same the same issues where it's like you know these clubs are trying to save every penny like why pay for a dinner after the game when the game's only two hours or three hours until you get home and you can just eat dinner, like making those little decisions where it's like it doesn't always feel like as a player that they're making the decision based on like treating us like individual like humans you know and being yeah, like how about these yeah. guys work hard they win or they lose it doesn't matter we still need to feed them because you know that's a part of our job and like gas station yeah. meals and stuff we used to eat <laughs> like oh this is actually you know it made me think of it made me think of my time in shamal it was different when i played in shamal also in france we traveled in those minivans everywhere we rarely flew or took trains like we took long rides in those minivans and the joke was like, we called it two sandwich, one dessert. And it was basically like, you'd go to like a Paul's, which is like, a, I don't know, just like a local kind of like French cuisine sandwich kind of dessert, like cafe. And you get like two shitty little sandwiches and like a croissant or like some, uh -huh. uh, I don't know, uh, macaron. Uh -huh. Yeah, exactly. It was like, it's not, it's not like they were like, Hey, let's, let's be thoughtful here of like a restaurant that's along the way. That's got maybe like some better quality food, you know? Yeah feels like you get the short end of the stick dude oh it is uh, it, like you said for them it's just like like a, a business it's they're like what what can i get the biggest return with putting in as little as they can to save for the next year or to save for whatever you know that's what it, a lot of, a lot of places it felt like okay here is different it's like it's almost too much the other way they give you everything so it's like you know if you don't play well like we give you everything Why don't you interesting well? interesting so it's kind of like on the other way here, but like in for sure in France it was it was terrible it's like What's these that? motels man I wouldn't like if someone's like oh you can stay here for stay here one night for free you know take it I, like, I wouldn't you couldn't pay me to stay in these places you know I only did because <laughs> we had to it was it was bad and it's just I don't know it, it always feels it's like a little bit disrespectful like we're meant to be professional yeah. athletes yeah. you know um we we are the product you know like uh of, of of the team of the company of the, of whatever and it's like people only see us like the public only see you know us when we play and they can make it look nice and make it look pretty and we can play good volleyball but they don't know what's going on behind the scenes like you know going to a physio and waiting 45 minutes past your appointment time mm -hmm. and then the physio doesn't show up he sends his student out to, to stretch you for 20 minutes and you go home or the shitty gas station meals you have or whatever you know 
they don't see that. They only see, you know, the, the shows we put on, you know, and I think that's why I feel like, especially in France, where I had a kind of also like a different view of what it was going to be like compared to mm. what it was. Um, so I was just like, this was just super like below my expectations and standards. And- and dude, the part the part that I think is that I hated the most is or struggled with the most is feeling like everyone's too afraid to do anything about it. Like, and this is yeah. such a classic theme for me that I've picked up all my years playing professional, where it's like everyone's bitching about something with the coach or the training or whatever. Everyone's bitching about how much it sucks that like we're eating gas station meals. Why couldn't we go to a restaurant? Why can't they feed us like higher quality food or bring something on the road? But no one does anything about it. And yeah. I think it's on one, it's, I don't see it as like cowardice. You should do something. That's my personality to be like, I'll, I'll bring it. I'll have the conversation mm-hmm. for sure. But I feel bad because I think a lot of players, especially if they're not like the guy on their team or yeah. the captain of the starter, like, they, they feel can't. like, Oh, well, I'll just shut up and eat my, you know, gas station cheeseburger. And it's yeah. like, it's like, man, I, I just wish more athletes weren't afraid to speak up and be like, Hey, like we're not asking for you to roll out the red carpet and buy a freaking private jet and fly us to a place that's, you know, 30 minutes away. Yeah. Like no one's asking for anything ridiculous. I think what we're asking for is like really easy to do. And I think that they're not like, you don't need to go so far out of your way to be like, Hey, let's give them like a good meal. You know, Hey, let's yeah. spend a little bit of extra money to bring the physio on the road for this road game. Cause not having a physio on the road, it's like, yeah, when you're healthy and whatever, you could care less. But now all of a sudden you're yeah, the guy who gets exactly. an injury and you're yeah. like, wait, what? We're leaving him back? Like, what am I going to, you know? Like, I don't know. I re- I just, I feel bad for a lot of players who are in that position where they just feel like, what am I going to do about it? You know? Yeah. Well, again, that's like, I enjoy complaining when shit's bad because <laughs> for one, it's cathartic, you know? You're like, just like, this sucks. It just feels good to like voice it. It also feels it's good also to go something. through suck with a buddy. Like we would complain yeah, yeah, a ton yeah, together yeah. in yeah. the like hotel <laughs> room and like, ah, oh, those are some yeah. of our best moments, dude. Yeah, man. Misery loves company, you know? So that's it's, right. It's great. Well, it's like whenever you go through the same shit together, you know, it's bonding, like team bonding, like your whole team is eating this shit food together Yeah. or having these shit practices or whatever it was, Yeah. you know? So it's like, it's good to feel that you're not alone. You know, it's like, but I think it can be good, you know, obviously, oh, stop complaining or whatever. But if you don't complain, nothing's going to change. Yeah. And and then, you know, the the point, the difference to, I think, in our situation, too, is it's one thing to just complain. It's another thing to, like, do something about it. And I think that's where a lot of people get it twisted is like, I agree, dude, I'm pissed. Be pissed. Act how you feel. But then do something like then like here's the problem now what's the solution yeah and trying to work towards the solution is ultimately like the most important part complaining and bitching and doing that with friends and teammates like it's honestly a lot of fun dude it, it, it brings it us together you know like yeah. i've had seasons where it's like our coach is so bad and that wasn't the case necessarily in in con but like you know where our coach is like our practice is so bad it sucks and we almost like bond over it where it's like all right yeah which isn't going to get us better. Like, let's do this together, you know? And you, like, it almost can bring you closer. Those like kind of shitty stories that like, you know, I, I'm tr- I was trying to think of like what other professional athletes have to deal with something like volleyball players. Like, I don't know. I can imagine like maybe water polo, like I'm guessing, you know, but yeah. like, I don't know, like those, like those sports that like, yeah, like that, like a great, great example. And for those yeah. in the States, we don't even have handball really. Like maybe we have a Olympic handball team, but like no one plays handball you know yeah. but like to do, that exact point where it's like we play a sport that um actually it's hard i don't want to say no one cares because the more of these like podcasts i do the more i like learn and grow in the volleyball community it's like actually volleyball is played all around the world it's yeah. pretty amazing yeah, it's a niche volleyball is a pretty niche sport very much so like... very much so and uh but in general it's like you know i i at least from the states i just have to compare it to like pro hockey, NHL, NBA, Mm -hmm. MLB, baseball, like NFL. And it's like, we're light years away from what those guys are getting, you know? And what's crazy is like, we put our bodies through the same amount of work. Like we were, and honestly, I'm throwing it out there, like, or more. Volleyball is, we were not designed as human beings to jump. fucking brutal. And the only people who might be designed for it are the volley ruse, you know, jumping's in their nature. But like for the rest of us, dude, like it's not in our nature. And like, it's so, uh, 
uh, physically demanding and like takes such a big toll on your body. And so do contact sports. Rugby, definitely not good for you. Like all these sports for sure. But like, I think volleyball as a non I've said this before. I think volleyball as a non-contact sport is the most uh, physically harming than any other non-contact sport. I 100% agree. 100%. Volleyball is fucking brutal to your body. Mm. Like, when Especially you're young, when you're 114, like, baby. Yeah, when you're 250 pounds <laughs> of Uber Eats, every jump you feel, you know? But yeah, it's, you know, for, for your, all your joints, all everything, man, volleyball is just ruthless. What other sport has like maximum efforts like constantly for, you know, two, three hours? Interesting. You know, it's yeah, like, and we're we're talking just non-contact. Like that's always yeah, been my mission is like, yeah, yeah cause like, you know, boxing or like some of these other sports yeah, where it's like combat okay, that's, sports yeah okay yeah you get yeah. your teeth kicked in it's different but like but ten, tennis i don't know just doing a bunch of lateral hop like moving around yeah. i don't know ping pong foosball <laughs> yeah. cricket yeah. cricket i don't know what's cricket, cricket like? fucking oh cricket you know if, you, if you're a bowler okay you, your shoulder will is like shoulder same i guess with like tennis it's like lateral movement and swinging your your racket hand but volleyball yeah. it's like it's a max jump it's like you need a lot of force from like your, your entire body and you yeah. gotta land as well and you gotta do it a lot and if you're playing in korea sometimes you do it fucking 97 times in a game <laughs> uh speaking speaking so, of just being a, a beast in korea and being such a physical specimen um Dude, what's like your, like, how would you give any advice to someone who's like, I want to learn how to like serve harder or be a better server? Cause you are like, you're well known for a handful of things. And one of them is definitely, you have just like a gnarly serve. Uh, uh, what, what helped me when I was younger was always setting like uh, just small, completable goals, like daily goals. Like if I'm going into a practice, I have like a set of goals that I want to do or want to try to complete and just have like small little things that I want to improve on every day. So like, of course, everyone wants to be able to bang a jump serve, but what helped me a lot with when I was growing up was like, I used to watch heaps of like uh, movies on, you know, volleyball movies, whatever. And just like seeing something that I was like, okay, this looks good. And just picturing in my head and just always having just a few, like one or two goals in a practice. And like, this is my, my job today is to complete this goal. If I don't do it, then the next day, you know, because I practiced mm. full time from when I was like 16. So it's just like uh, small goals because the big goal is, you know, if you're, if you're a young dude, you can have, you know, 15, hopefully 20 years of playing. You know, so that's why I was always pretty good with just setting small, smaller, accomplishable goals, like mm. daily goals that, I don't know, that you kind of almost don't even recognize your, um, your growth because it's always like, I'm working on this today. I have a specific thing that I want to get good at or want to be better at just today. And a lot of the time I couldn't do those, but those complete those goals, but then it would just carry for the next day. I'm still working on this thing. But once that's down, uh, another goal, like another small one, it could be your toss, could be your like footwork, like finding your perfect uh, footwork for your serve, your approach, um, your height of your toss, how you hold the ball, how anything, just like a small, something that's, like uh, quantifiable and uh, attainable in a short, like a short term. I, I felt like just having a lot of those and they kind of just like added together to, you know, because my big goal is I want to be a good volleyball player. I want to be a good server, a good attacker, whatever. But just having the daily goals of wanting to be better because it's easy to get sucked into the thing. Like I practice today, I have practice tomorrow, just like showing up and, you know, running the drills yeah. that the coach does, you know. How does that, I'm, I'm interested to know how that, how that has changed for you as you've gotten older. Because I know for myself, like, you know, the kids I work with, like either in the middle blocker academy or like the like one-on-one -on -one clients I have, like working with these kids has taught me a lot, right? Where I'm like, you know, trying to get them to be uh, more intentional with how they show up to training. Exactly like what you said. Yeah. There's no like shortcuts to that. It's like, if you can be really intentional about something, you can, let's say, maximize that practice in yeah. to to the the best that you can rather than just showing up. And maybe some days your intention is to like, go have fun. And that's what you need. And that's fantastic too. Like, I also believe a lot in the experiment process, right? Yeah. Like, go sure experiment with also... different tosses and, you know? Yeah. Yeah. But I'm sure there's also days when you feel like shit 
And it's like my intention today is just to fucking survive this practice and mm. you know, rest and come back for tomorrow. But that's a sad reality. Older, <laughs> yeah, that's that's what you get in all your call. I don't know. Yeah. Today. Um, now it's like I have pretty much if I have like a, a practice, it's I, I still work on something, even if it's more like my my approach for attacking or my arm swing. Or if, you know, if I miss hitting the ball, usually it's because when I'm spiking, I'm not like when I spike, when I go to attack the ball or serve the ball, I try to focus, like pinpoint my vision on the point of the ball that I want to hit. So you have like, you know, hit cross or line or whatever. Then if I'm miss hitting a ball, it's because, you know, my focus was like too broad. Because sometimes you know, I'm also looking at the block when I'm, when I'm attacking, I get the peripherals. Um, like take so me like, through. Okay. Sorry, no, I was just going to say, take me through like serving, like you're walking back there and like, be honest, because I'm also really interested to know if it fluctuates or not, because I think for myself, like I have a couple like cues that I tell myself in my head pretty consistently, but then all of a sudden I miss two serves in a row or something. And sometimes it changes, dude. I'm not always as resilient as I'd like to be. So I'm really interested to know from you, like what keeps, what helps you build that resilience or like, what's it honestly like for you, you know? Uh, there's, of course, there's times where I miss a few serves in a row but it's always like in my head i always you know usually it's like when i get the ball and go walk back to the spot where i start my approach from i in my head i always tell myself like now is a good time for a break point you know so then when i get back there and i'm holding the ball i i visualize my serve and it takes you know one or two seconds what do you mean visualize usually, like you just like i just see part? i just the everything i just see the, the toss and the contact Interesting. You know, that happens like fast. Yeah. And then I get ready. I do my, my routine. Then when I toss the ball, usually if, if it's a good toss, then it's like in my head, it's like, go get it. If it's a bad so do toss, you pick, then. Do you pick a spot? Or are you like, I'm going to hit this guy's foot? Or are you kind of like, I'm just going to go with the ball? Uh, like Most of it's like, okay, I have an idea like of where I want to serve before I serve. But then sometimes it's like the toss is a bit off or a bit back or whatever. And then it's like, okay, now I have to have to deal with this and try and make like salvage this. Uh, this and that this serve. I think that's a good thing to to touch on. Is like I, I know a lot of. I think that's the heart. That's what makes good and great servers is your ability to adjust based on your toss. So like I can imagine for you, it's like maybe you toss it like your lefty. Maybe you toss it like farther on your left side. Well, maybe trying to bring the ball hard back across your body is like there's too much movement and with serving like i feel like being simple always wins more or less like not doing not moving too much or trying yeah, to like sure. too much wrist at you know like unless you're going short or doing little cuts and stuff but you know yeah, i had some good advice when i was younger it's like also with before i served before i toss the ball like I, I hold the ball out and i'm still i'm completely still so it's like uh the less actions you make the you know less room for error there is so of course you know try to be what try your routine routine needs to be repeatable um and i don't know for me it's always like before i toss the ball i hold the ball out in front and i'm i'm still for it's like half a second or so and it just feels like okay like always from here i'm from this always at this point and then i do my toss and go and serve mm. um, but also recently last year or so i've developed like a like a hybrid like a spin toss to a float to and now you got now that now hybrid comes, flow yeah. in now? What? Yeah, yeah. I, I can send you some clips, man. I've got some aces with it. Usually, I only do it if I toss the ball too far in front. And it's like, I've got to yeah, save it. Yeah. So I just yeah. whack, whack the float in. And it like catches them off guard. I don't obviously don't do it often because my, my job is to bomb serves. Yeah. Um, but it's, it's, been, it's been pretty decent. Every now and then, we'll waffle one, you know, a couple of meters out the back. But... Um, it's and I also, great, you know? I also, I mean, you have like a traditional jump spin and you actually have like really gnarly, uh, sp you get really gnarly spin on the ball. Um, I'm the opposite. I have a hard time getting like true spin, they call it on the ball, yeah. but I switched to a five-step hybrid that, uh, yeah, I, yeah. I either waffle or float. Dude, the float is almost better than the waffle. Like the <laughs> float sometimes. Cause if you can, if you can establish yourself as I can hit it like a jump serve, let's say, and you get receivers mm -hmm. to go X far back and then you hit them with a float. Yeah. That's like, they're not expecting. So now they have to move and they have to pass, pass other platform. It's nasty. So I can imagine you're like, yeah, you're bombing deep and you have true spin on the ball. Guys are like basically at the back line. And then you hit them with that sneaky little float. 
Yeah. I, I'll find, I'll send you some clips later. It's yeah, usually it. like, sometimes when I'm like feeling hot and serving, I'm just like tossing the ball a little bit further in every time, you know, being aggressive. And then one time it's like way too far in front. It's like, I have to float it, you know? Um, and this is something I work with my coach on. It's like having, you know, variations. Um, mm. And to that, in the preseason here, I, I've been here since, you know, middle of July, just working on a bunch of stuff with, with Tommy. And the spin float serve is one of them. And it has mm. actually it turned out to help me quite, especially if you can do it to like the foreign player who's receiving. Like they obviously, they're, they're not the best receivers. And if you can, you know, dime them with a, a float serve on their arms, it's going to work out pretty well. Yeah. And you also have like a, you have like a nice wind up. You have like a pretty loose arm, would you say, for like. Yeah, I guess I'd, I'd, I, I wouldn't know because I, this is my arm, you know. All right, well, I want you to stop. I want you to think, close your eyes right now. I want you to think about it. No, I feel like in like when I picture you swinging, it's like you're not like stiff or like you have this like very yeah. fluid, quick for like being a cannonball that you are. You know, like you you have you have this like pretty fast step close and like pretty loose arm. Do you like? Did you always have like? Do you feel like that's an important part of like actually hitting strong is keeping your arm loose or having a fast step close rather? Uh, I think it it all adds up. You know, the, the biomechanics of being able to hit hard or being explosive i know some people just naturally you can tell are like it's like this guy's just you know he's got it together his brain and his body connect and then there's the other guys you see who are a bit goofy they're like oh this guy you know struggles and put this guy in the middle huh <laughs> yeah this guy's 6'10 and can't you know touch his toes put him in the middle um but i don't know i feel like it's just they're yeah, always been pretty natural of course like uh, i've been trying like working on like uh all those things. Cause again, there's times where I, when I've been younger watching my own like scrimmages of practice and, and watching, like, I've been pretty lucky. There's like Paul Carroll was a you know, Australian legend. Also he yeah. played college in Pepperdine. Yeah. You know, he's a lefty like me. Um, one of the goats of Australian volleyball. And, you know, I'm lucky to say I know him. I've known him for a, quite a while and being able to learn from him just by, you know, watching and talking with him and he's super smart dude. And, always you know we like to give out advice and just just talk so hmm. knowing him from like a young age like and just seeing how you know he's a very successful player and also a lefty okay he's taller than me but mechanic pretty similar hmm. you know just seeing how he plays it's like okay then watch and i try how i'm doing and then almost compare it but okay what can i do better what can i steal from him to help me get better what can i like fast track um, but I guess a lot of it was just playing different sports growing up and learning how to use my body in different ways, you know, and then bringing that to volleyball. Mm. I mean, I completely hear that. I, I say that all the time and I'm super into the like uh, movement part associated with playing volleyball and just in general and how we evolved and all that kind of stuff. I really love it. And I, that seems to a lot of like great athletes that I've talked to, that seems to be a common factor that they didn't just like find volleyball at like age 10. And then like, that's all they did was play volleyball there. They were always multi-athletes, like multi-sport athletes. And I can imagine like, and that's to me, that's like a big part of like, what is the essence of skill, which is like predictability. And when you can, when you have more access to different types of movements, because you've played and predicted in different situations, not just with volleyball. Um, I can imagine it allows you to do, you know, things that translate really well once you become kind of like a full-time volleyball athlete. Yeah, I'm sure. Like, and also like, you see things differently, you know, I guess you have different perspective on, I guess, different situations being playing a lot of different sports. You can read, I guess, like body posture differently, or like, you know, how to move in certain situations or displace your own body weight or whatever it is. I think playing different sports is great. Like in life in general, I think sport is fantastic. Yeah. And, you know, now just to kind of like wind things down a little bit, like now you're not doing the national team in the summer and you got an awesome wife, two little girls, like what, um, what do your summers look like? Like, well, first of all, is it nice to have like the summer off? Like, what are you doing? Oh man, it is, it is amazing. Like after, cause I, I joined the national team in 2012 and pretty much my first summer not playing national team was just after COVID hit. Uh, so 
having this summer, it's like you can recover. You can, you know, if there's something you want to do, you can, you actually have time to do it. You know, you can get your body right. You can, I don't know, enjoy life. You know, uh, what my, are you like, doing? My, like, uh, literally just finding, like, finding something like, oh, this place is interesting. Let's go take the family, let's take the kids here or going to Australia, like, or being in Estonia. Just literally, like, uh, just having fun, you know, just, being able to have the choice to do whatever you want, if that's staying at home for two days or, you know, being able to consistently go to the gym and lift at a, at a pace you need to, to be ready for the next season. And is it, is it helpful for you to have like such a big, because I think a lot of times, and I've learned this from injury is like a lot of times you stop playing volleyball for like a couple months and you're like, am I going to be good again? Like, am I going to remember? Like when I had my, when I, you know, I came to con before then I hadn't played six on six volleyball in a year and a half because I had knee surgery. And then it was the COVID year. So we didn't do anything that summer. Yeah. Like I had no structured volleyball for a long time and came back and we had an amazing season and it was just like, Oh yeah, the body doesn't forget. So now I can imagine like, even for your mind. So you're not getting like burnt out. Like when you went back and forth between national team and playing overseas, like, did you get burnt out? I think I, I didn't realize probably that I was burnt out until like I stopped, you know, it's because it was the, it was tough. There was a time when I was like in Russia, that was the hardest part was going from Russia to starting VNL. And then I was playing two out of the three games on the VNL weekend. And then from there, we had Olympic qualification in Italy. Like the, we played against Italy, Serbia, and Cameroon. After that, we had Asian champs. And then we had World Cup. So, and I was there for all of it that summer. That's when I had already like a wife and a little kid. So, mm. like, and at the time, you just, you kind of just like, with the punches it's like okay now you have to get ready for this i have a, a week off or have a few days off i need to prepare for this tournament and then go to this training camp and then the season starts in you know just after world cup finishes you know, so it's like you, you almost don't have time to be like oh how am i feeling or how am i doing you know and it's not till after you stop it's like oh like you, you know you, you are to you realize you're mentally just gone mm. and physically as well you know so it's i almost didn't realize that I'm cooked until after. Uh, so I got to have a break and really just like, like reflect on like this last, you know, 18 months as just being nonstop volleyball. Yeah. Well, dude, you never know you're cooked until you end up like a piece of kangaroo That's, jerky, uh, dude. Until you're a shrimp on the Barbie. Until you're a freaking shrimp on the Barbie, dude. Yeah. Uh, dude, Linky, this was great. Also, uh, dude, people call you Stinky Linky. Why do they call you Stinky Linky? I was pretty good at ripping farts. You're the fart I ripper? See. Yeah. That's amazing. Is that actually why? Always, every, uh, I guess so, yeah. I don't know, it's been a uh, nickname. I used to be able to, like, fart. I, just, I, don't, I don't know if I want to say it on air, but fuck it. To be able to, like, fart on command, you know, like, suck oh, air dude. in and... Can we talk about out. farting on command? You know what? We're sure. going to go there. First of all, me pretending like I don't know why they call you Stinky Linky. You were my roommate. I know exactly why they call you Stinky <laughs> Linky. Okay. Second of all, uh, uh, farts in the air. Dude, I, rem I will never forget where I learned how to fart on command. Okay. I was 13 years old. We had like a little trampoline in my backyard. And I remember uh, like trying to do backflips, like trying to learn backflips. Mm -hmm. And I remember rolling, like doing like a backwards somersault, rolling there and feeling like uh my butt just like sucked in air like yeah like, and then i popped yeah, it out yeah. and i was like i was like whoa, whoa i can yeah. basically burp out of my butt <laughs> and yeah. ever since then it was like the coolest thing and i used to like roll back suck in air fart yeah. my friends thought it was hilarious yeah. like it was so i was like oh my god i can fart on command now dude, yeah, dude that, was, that was that was legit I, I think i was even younger but i uh, Again, with the same you know group of friends that I've had forever, we were like at a school camp, and I was like the whole class was around. I was fucking dax around my knees, you know, sucking air in and dax around just, my knees, <laughs> just blasting, you know. But, oh my god! Yeah, that's amazing, dude. Farting on command—it's a skill. I don't know if anyone else out there has learned that skill. I love that, like. I, like for me, I literally like came up on like on accident. Like it just, yeah. it came to me, you know, but once you learn those kind of things at that age, you're going to, you're going to milk that joke until it's literally oh, sure. no longer funny, you know, not until you shit your pants. And then <laughs> until you shit your pants. 
<laughs> that's more likely to be true because also let's be let's be honest farts i don't think farts will ever not be funny farts will always oh, no. be funny always you always. know like it, dude it was so funny like literally two weeks ago we we're in a, in a practice like midway through six on six and javier our coach like pulls us together and he's like kind of upset with the training or whatever and he's like just talking to the whole team and someone i don't remember who it was but someone ripped a <laughs> fart and he was pissed. fucking legend he was yeah. so pissed, but like randomly, like we're warming up and someone farts. And every time, dude, I'm like that little child in me is just like, <laughs> you're going to yeah, get man, me with will, that, you know? That always, I don't know, that always be funny. You can tell if, if someone doesn't think that funny, then I don't want to be that friend. You That's know? true. I will say the only time it's not funny is when you're not in the mood for it. <laughs> like if we're, I don't know, eating dinner somewhere or like we're stuck yeah. in a room together and you're just keep farting and farting. And finally it's like, yeah. dude, what are you doing? Come on. Especially, but then like, what stank. Especially if you're next to Stinky Linky, dude. Yes. <laughs> but like when I'm in there, like when I have those spelts of like, oh, I got to fart a ton, you know, because yeah. like we ate, I don't know, some vegan meal. I feel like vegans fart the most out of anyone, by the way. Um, and you're not vegan. So maybe you're the other piece of science there to debate. <laughs> yeah, but... I'm, I'm the other end. Well, dude, this is fantastic. I'm happy we ended this um, in true fashion, just talking about, you know, farts and how to suck air with your butt. Dude, this has been really great. Yeah. Uh, but no, I I truly do. I, I love you so much, man. I'm, I'm I really appreciate your time. I know for you it's late and it's probably getting close to bedtime. But nah, yeah, um, but it's all good, man. I, I'm glad to be. It was fun to catch up with you again. Yeah, dude, this was super great. And I think um, if people don't at least pick up on the lesson of how to suck air and create your own farts, uh, hopefully they could pick up something else, dude. Because this was yeah. this was this was really great, dude. I love I love getting to catch up with you. We had so much fun in con, dude. And I like just getting to know you as a person was so great. And this is why I love this, dude. It's like we haven't like we randomly send each other messages, but like we don't get to like catch up. So this is sick. And I'm happy yeah. that hopefully other people got to be a part of it too. Man, that was dope. Thanks for having me, mate. Solid baby. All right, dude. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Jeez, no worries, man. All right. Love you, buddy. Yeah.